You want a war? You're gonna get one. Forget the lies, the money. We're in this together and through it all. They said that nothing's forever. Welcome back to Reliving the War and welcome to September 15th, 1997. WCW Nitro's live tonight from Charlotte, North Carolina while Raw's War takes place in Muncie, Indiana. WCW just presented Fall Brawl 1997. Make sure you watch the video I uploaded on Sunday and the WWF are currently promoting two upcoming events, WWF One Night Only and Bad Blood in Your House. One Night Only is going to get covered on the channel later in the week. Another jam up guy got in touch, KD's Attic. KD met a bunch of superstars at the For Love of Wrestling convention while wearing his Reliving the War Patreon shirt. He even met the real Double J Jesse James in Rockabilly. Look at how happy Rockabilly is. Alright, let's do it. Episode 99 of Reliving the War. Raw opens up with a recap of Steve Austin's recent attacks, Jim Ross provides a voiceover and fans are left with a question, who's next on Stone Cold's hit list? We then go to the arena, we get the formal show introduction, and we're going to start things off with an IC title tournament match. On Nitro, things aren't so straightforward. We see the damage Ric Flair sustained at War Games thanks to Kurt Hennig, and Tony Schiavone walks away from the commentary table saying he can't do this anymore. Schiavone talked about getting into the wrestling business because of Ric Flair before walking off, and Tanae and Sabisco are left to recap what happened in the War Games main event match. It's alright boys, cheer up, the first match is an absolute banger. Disco Inferno takes on Dean Malenko while Ken Shamrock battles Farouk. I think Dean Malenko gave Disco his best match ever back at the 1996 Bash at the Beach. This Nitro match though was nowhere near as good. Malenko's got a taped up left leg thanks to Jeff Jarrett though that doesn't stop him taking Disco's head off with a clothesline. The quote more focused Disco Inferno gets the focus kicked out of him by the Iceman. Dean then tries to end it with a cloverleaf, Disco pokes the eye but still Malenko remains in control afterwards. Disco begs for Dean to back up, a back elbow gives Disco another chance but he runs straight into a power slam. Disco Inferno quite simply doesn't look like he belongs in the same ring as Dean Malenko as we see a suplex followed by more punishment in the corner. The Inferno uses the old noggin and he starts attacking the leg and this is what he should have been doing right from the start. He works over the injured body part and Dean can't even run after getting whipped into the corner, but he still manages to counter a hip toss with a double underhook powerbomb. We then see the Texas Cloverleaf and Dean wins via submission. Get used to seeing Disco losing guys, it's a frequent occurrence. So the IC title tournament continues on Raw, the Brian Pillman vs Dude Love match will take place a little later on, though I know what match I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Farouk tried to get an early advantage but a few kicks followed by a knee lift put the nation's leader in his place, the crowd's going nuts for Kenny Boy. The eye poke comes into play again when Shamrock goes for a leg lock but just like the Disco vs Malenko match it doesn't really help, Shamrock fires back with a belly to belly suplex but Farouk kicks out. Farouk catches Shamrock with a big old spine buster. Shamrock's spine got busted so bad that he started coughing up blood on the outside. The lesson is quite simple, do not fuck with Farouk. Ken Shamrock ignored this lesson though when he decided to fuck with Farouk one more time with another belly to belly suplex and it pays off, Ken Shamrock wins via pinfall. So Shamrock advances in the IC title tournament. His prize for winning this match is a dominator from Farouk and a good old kicking from the nation. The Legion of Doom run down to make the save, seems like that's all Hawk and Animal do nowadays, professional lifesavers. JR and the King then let us know about a few superstars and matches we're going to see on tonight's show. Vince McMahon is on assignment and he's not at Raw tonight. I wonder what assignment Vince McMahon had assigned himself. Takamichi Noku takes on uh, El Pantera next. 
and on Nitro we have the Faces of Fear vs Harlem Heat. Booker T and Stevie Ray took the babyface role in this match and the crowd seriously popped for Booker T getting the hot tag towards the end of the bout. Unfortunately for the Heat though, they weren't able to overcome the sheer toughness and manliness of Ming and the Barbarian. Booker tried to pin the wrong guy and this led to Ming applying the Tonkin death grip. Booker gives up and the Faces of Fear win another one. On Raw, Steve Austin cuts a promo before the light heavyweight match. He tells JR to ask him more specific questions or he'll drop him again with a stunner. And when Jerry Lawler tells Austin that Owen Hart has some sort of surprise in store for the rattlesnake tonight, Austin says he doesn't care. Owen Hart has some payback coming and the King of Hearts can't do anything to hurt Austin more than what he already did. We go to the ring where Taka and El Pantera have a match and check out the speed of Pantera's arm drag, blink and you miss it. Both superstars got to show off diving moves from the ring to the outside with Taka's springboard crossbody definitely looking a lot better than Pantera's plancha. Back in the ring, Pantera summoned his inner Ultimo Dragon with a corner headstand and he hit Taka with a corner Frankensteiner and Moonsault. Pantera definitely wrestled more like the cruiserweights we were used to seeing on WCW. In the end though, Taka won the match with a Tornado DDT, a missile dropkick and the Michinoku driver. I wouldn't have been annoyed if El Pantera oh, made more appearances on Raw, he was pretty good. During the match, JR and the King talked about the Hart Foundation trying to get more gold tonight when Brett and Davey take on the Headbangers for the tag team titles. That's gonna be our Raw's War main event. Recon and Sniper of the Truth Commission battle Hawk and Animal next on Raw while Juventud Guerrero wrestles Rey Mysterio Jr on Nitro. Diamond Dallas Page comes out before the Nitro match and he says he has a disease, a disease that eats him up inside and that disease is Randy Savage. Dallas then says that Randy's the disease but DDP's the cure, uh, th that doesn't make sense. Anyway, DDP says he's beaten Savage once before and Dallas thinks he can do it again. DDP challenges the Macho Man to one more match, Las Vegas, Nevada, Halloween Havoc, live on pay per view. DDP tells Savage he doesn't need to bring his Slim Jims because Paige is gonna bring the jam. Mysterio and Hoovy come to the ring for their match and Tanae thinks Mysterio's about to unmask. Psych motherfucker. Ray gives his outer mask to a kid at ringside, that's awesome. Someone who did unmask on this episode of Nitro though was La Parka. there he is right there. Super fast chain wrestling to start us off here as usual, it's never not impressive. Ray pulls off an awesome head scissors takedown, it was all going so well and then Hoovy completely misses a dropkick, you can hear the crowd laughing here. Hoovy makes up for it though with a sunset flip powerbomb, he brings Ray back into the ring with a brain buster and Hoovy pulls off a nice leg drop from the apron back into the ring, all is forgiven. Jove and Tud then misses a running corner attack, Ray counters a running powerbomb and Mysterio plants Hoovy with a sit down spine buster. Mysterio's very pleased with himself after pulling off a top rope hurricane rana and it ends with Ray countering a springboard attack with a powerbomb before hitting a picture perfect west coast pop. Good match, very good match, so good that random fans were high fiving each other in the audience. The Commandant's happy his commission are gonna face some real competition tonight in Hawk and Animal. He says the real warriors are gonna prove their superiority over this legion. The audience were again fired up for this one, Raw had a good crowd on hand tonight. Hawk and Sniper started it off and Sniper went down after a neck breaker. B squared and Animal then get in the ring and old Ghost Recon was doing a decent enough job until Animal put him on the mat with a shoulder block. The interrogator gave his buddy a hand by bringing Animal to the outside and throwing him into the steps and a loud LOD chant broke out as Sniper Elite got tagged in to do some more damage to Animal. When Recon gets back in, Animal makes the tag to Hawk. The Legion of Doom work together to beat the ever loving shit out of these goons and it ends with Recon taking the Doomsday device, haven't seen that in a while. The interrogator then runs in to break up the pin with a leg drop and check it out. <sighs> this is like the leg drops you'd hit on your mates when wrestling in school, absolutely shit. Kenny Boy Shamrock returns the favour by helping out the Road Warriors and then the Nation of Domination hit the ring to get some payback on Shamrock and the Legion of Doom. Great, more gangs fighting on Raw. Good crowd reaction here though for the Legion of Doom and you could see the Road Warriors feeding off the energy. A good crowd can make all the difference sometimes. Announcing excellence, the new fragrance for him. The sweet aroma of success. The fragrance of excellence combines leather found on championship belts, subtle hints of maple syrup, a dash of strawberry jam straight from Calgary, a touch of class, 
a touch of style, and it's all excellently executed with the musky, masculine scent of Stu Hart's sweaty dungeon. Keep those lousy, stinking hyenas away while smelling like a real hero and repel those tramps from entering the dressing room after a hard-fought match. Excellence for him guarantees you'll be sharpshooting your way to success. Visit chinlocks.com today. Get the excellence. A little fan gets a peck on the cheek from Sonny and he's absolutely delighted. Just make sure you wash your face later with sandpaper, kid. JR calls the next match a Mighty Minis Tag Team Contest. El Torito and Perita Morgan vs Max Mini and Mr. Lucky, what? On Nitro we have William Regal vs Alex Wright and The Giant vs Conan. Not much point going in depth with the Raw Tag Team match. While some of the moves these little wrestlers do in the ring are really impressive, these are simply attraction matches that don't lead to anything, but still, I do like watching these guys take bumps. There's something about it that I can't quite put my finger on, but it's strangely entertaining. The big question though is, how lucky is Mr. Lucky? Well, he pulls off a truly awesome arm drag by using Perita Morgan as a springboard, and we see a nice Hurricane Rana before he tags out, so far he's been pretty lucky. The move of the match though was Max Mini's corkscrew attack to the outside, he paid the price for it though by getting gored in the ring by El Torito, and then Mr. Lucky's luck ran out when he was left all alone in the ring. Aww. Max Mini was too busy high-fiving fans and some fans were too busy trying to get Sonny's attention. It worked by the way. Max gets tagged in and El Torito applies a chin lock, good man. Mr. Lucky got a chance to show off more arm drags, easily taking care of both of his opponents. Max Mini lands a perfect diving hurricane rana and it ends with a Max Mini diving headbutt on El Torito. Consider me sports entertained. Max has a mini bratwurst, Alex has a big bratwurst. Big bad Alex faces what could be his biggest challenge yet. Steve Regal is returned to Nitro, and Mr. Regal has no time at all for Saturday Ride Fever. Alex starts it off with an arm drag, the crowd boos him relentlessly, and Alex covers his ears to block out the fans. A battle for wrist control ensues, with Alex performing his headstand counter, but Regal breaks it and he performs a single leg takedown. The two get to their feet, and Regal smacks right. Britain vs Germany reignites on Monday Nitro. Regal struts around the ring, Alex holds his ear while complaining to Mickey J. Alex then gets a little vicious, he applies another wrist lock, and the fans are cheering for Steve Regal, even Larry's Zabisco can't believe it. People disliked Alex so much that they chanted for Steve Regal. That's how good Alex Wright was at playing his character. Wright gets some payback by slapping Regal across the face. He gets up to dance, but Regal drop kicks Wright out of the ring. Alex gets back in by vaulting over the top rope and shifting his body for a splash, but Regal's arms under the ropes. Both men then collide into each other, and when they get back up, they begin trading European uppercuts. Regal switches when Alex goes for the German suplex. He trips Alex up and and then he goes for the stretch. Alex is able to get to the ropes. Regal doesn't move fast enough during a pin attempt and Alex is able to break out easily. Alex then flips Regal into the corner and there it is, the German suplex. Alex Wright retains. A fantastic TV match here, very short but no time was wasted, both guys made the most of it. I went back and watched their 27th of May 1996 Nitro match after watching this one, that's how much I enjoyed it. You know what else happened on the 27th of May 1996? You war? You're gonna get one. Ray Trailer then cut a quick promo where he said the NW were only effective when they attack in numbers. He says he was once part of the NW only in spirit but not in heart. Okay. Ray then thinks a real man stands on his own and he wants to know if any NW members have enough jam to face him one on one. Ray doesn't need backup and he doesn't need backup. Conan then came out for a match against the Giant and WCW rigged up some new pyro for the big man. This looked awesome. Conan gets a little cocky at the opening bell and he quickly shits his pants when the Giant grabs hold of him. Conan remains determined though, he gets back in the ring and the Giant flattens him twice with a few big clubbing blows to the back. Conan again goes to the outside and he decides it's maybe best to walk away from this one, but the Giant follows him and Conan takes a headbutt. Back in the ring, the giant put his big boot on Conan's neck. Raven watches in the audience and he looks incredibly bored. Conan gets a brief opportunity to do some damage, but he makes the mistake of going to the top rope. 
Giant catches Conan, we see the choke slam, and that's the end of the match. I've nothing to add here, it's what you'd expect from a giant match of this era. By the way, Tony Schiavone still hasn't returned to commentary, he's still crying in the toilets, fucking fanboy. Stevie Richards tries his luck against Diamond Dallas Page next on Nitro, on Raw we have Dude Love vs Brian Pillman. So this Raw match was supposed to take place last week, Dude Love comes out first and Pillman must have decided that the WWF now provides a safe working environment because here he is, along with Marlena. She looks… different. Jim Ross gets a few quick words and Marlena says she misses her daughter and she misses her husband, she just wants to go home. Marlena then holds the ropes open for Pillman, and this whole thing's another early indication that the WWF are going to take their storylines in a much more risque direction. Pillman doesn't get enough credit either for helping usher in the Attitude Era. This, along with the Pillman's Got a Gun stuff, were the first examples of the company taking things to a whole different level in terms of storylines. Pillman gets floored at the opening bell, so he decides to crawl over to Marlena and blow her a kiss. Dude Love performs a shoulder block and a headlock takedown, twice, but Pillman counters the second headlock takedown with a head scissors. Marlena then tries to escape and Pillman rushes out of the ring to retrieve her. He then tells her off after leaving her in front of the commentary desk. Marlena then watches as Pillman throws Foley into the ring steps and back inside the ropes, Pillman pulls off a nice jumping clothesline before applying a chin lock. Dude Love fights back, Pillman gets his head smashed into all three turnbuckle pads in the corner, and Marlena smiles as the dude still dances. Dude Love then hits a swinging neckbreaker, he warms up the band for sweet shin music, but then Dustin Rhodes hits the ring and Pillman gets attacked. Marlena laughs her ass off as the bizarre one unloads on the loose cannon. Pillman manages to escape with Marlena as officials hold Goldust back, and Pillman gives Goldust a cheeky wave before we go to commercial break. The fans are definitely invested in this one, and Goldust got one of his best reactions when he stormed the ring. Pillman wins though via DQ, and that means Pillman advances in the IC title tournament. That also means that Pillman's gonna face Owen Hart in the semi-finals. On Nitro, Stevie Richards also warms up the band, he does it right at the opening bell. In Dallas, uh, he bangs Stevie, I guess. Richards gets to the ropes after getting hammerlocked and DDP laughs as Stevie complains about hair pulling. DDP softens up the shoulder, Richards slams DDP's head to the mat, Stevie hides in the corner afterwards and Dallas sticks his toe up Stevie's hole. A shoulder block from Dallas puts Stevie down and then DDP pulls off a gut wrench gut buster, yeah that's what it was, it looked good too. Raven looks on as Stevie begins his comeback, Big Stevie Cool hits a back suplex and he follows this up with a running hip attack, and that's the end of Stevie's offense. Page hits an inverted atomic drop, he follows this up with the pancake. He lifts Stevie up in the fireman's carry position and then he pulls off a diamond cutter. Nice finish. After the match, Raven gets in the ring, Paige lets him walk past, and Stevie gets slapped, he gets kicked out of the ring, Stevie gets kicked around a little on the outside, and Raven just heads back into the audience and he leaves the arena. Thanks Raven. I'm not sure what the plans were for Richards and Raven and I don't know if they've ever spoke about it but it's going nowhere. Even after the match at Clash of the Champions, we're still pretty much where we began with these two. On Raw, Steve Austin's gonna cut a promo. On Nitro, Wrath and Mortis take on the Outsiders. I've got a bad feeling about this one. So Jerry Lawler's gonna conduct this Steve Austin interview so we know where this is going. Lawler tries to avoid the inevitable by saying the way the WWF have treated Austin lately is a crying shame. The King says he almost had to get the smile surgically removed from his face when JR took the stunner. And Jerry says Austin's stunner on Commissioner Slaughter was a thing of beauty. Let's see it again, you guys enjoyed how Slaughter bumped last week. Austin tells JR to stay at the commentary table with his stupid cowboy hat on and Austin won't need to stun him again. He reminds Sergeant Slaughter that no one orders Stone Cold around, and Austin says it's a good thing Vince isn't that raw tonight or Austin would dump him on his head too. In regards to Owen Hart, Austin says he's just playing with him. At the snap of a finger, Stone Cold could destroy the King of Hearts, but Owen's got hell to pay along with the whole Hart Foundation. Speaking of which, the boys come out to interrupt Austin. Brett says there's a word for guys like Austin, Austin's a hoser, and the hitman says he's been waiting a very long time to say that. So Austin's now an animal, a low down stinking rotten hyena, and a hoser. 
Brett says the Heart Foundation is sick of Austin's attacks and it's time to put an end to it. Brett sends some schmuck to the ring while Owen says the Hearts have used the American justice system to their advantage. Steve Austin gets served with a temporary restraining order and Owen says if Austin gets within 100 feet of the King of Hearts he's going in the slammer. Owen says this. And that is exactly where an animal, an animal like you belongs. Because this guy is nothing but an animal. He's an animal. An animal. An animal. The hearts walk away as Stone Cold and Lawler look over the paperwork. Lawler puts his head right over Austin's shoulder and he ends up taking a stunner. This wasn't the most impressive thing about this promo though. Check this out. Austin's hit stunners on JR, Slaughter and Jerry Lawler. Jim Ross speculates that Vince McMahon could be next. A fun promo though and as mentioned last week, Steve's getting more popular by staying out of action. It's pretty impressive what they're doing here. Ah, mixed feelings about this Nitro tag match. I like both teams but I also don't want the outsiders to squash Mortis and Wrath. Kevin Nash is wankered again this week and uh, he's having fun tonight. He has a question for Raph. No, no, I have Mr. a question Henning. for you. What my son is the riddle of steel? <laughs> if you got that reference, then crush your enemies and see them driven before you. So yeah, Hall and Nash aren't taking these guys seriously at all. Mortis doesn't sell the toothpick and when Scott slaps Mortis around on the mat, you can see Canyon isn't in the mood to mess around. The two trade some great looking punches. Mortis goes down after a discus punch but he gets back up and he performs a famouser. The crowd pops for this. Mortis then says no more for life before spitting on Hall. He lays in a few kicks in the corner and Hall replies with a fall away slam. Scott hits Wrath with a cheap shot, Mortis takes advantage with a jump wheel kick and then Wrath gets tagged in. Scott wants nothing to do with Wrath so in comes Kevin Nash and again you can see that Big Sexy isn't taking this one too seriously. Wrath takes a few back elbows in the corner but he comes back with a running clothesline in the opposite corner. Nash fights back but Wrath answers with a pump kick and the crowd make a lot of noise. But Nash isn't gonna stay down this time. Mortis comes back in and Nash takes a Russian leg sweep followed by a second rope leg drop. It's refreshing to see a tag team get the better of the outsiders but it all ends when Six jumps on the apron allowing Hall and Nash to get an unfair advantage. Wrath tries to save Mortis from taking a jackknife but it doesn't work. Mortis takes Nash's finisher and the outsiders win via pinfall. We knew it was gonna happen but at least Mortis and Wrath got some offense in. It looked like our boys in the NWO here took great delight in putting out their opponents. We've got an NWO promo up next on Nitro while Owen Hart battles the Patriot on Raw. Jim Cornette's gonna replace Jerry Lawler on commentary because, well, that stunner almost broke the King's neck by the looks of things. We have seen this match before. We get another flag waving contest at the beginning of the bout, which Owen clearly won, by the way. Patriot with an arm drag into an arm bar, the two trade hammerlocks, Patriot with a hip toss and a follow up body slam. Patriot then lands another arm drag. We see another arm bar another hammer lock and another hip toss, fucking hell. Oh look there's a drop toe hold followed by another arm bar. Owen finally says fuck this and he breaks the monotony with a boot to the face followed by a missile drop kick, thank god. He then goes to soften the leg up but Mr Hart has a visitor. Steve Austin appears but there's a bunch of cops standing right behind him. When we come back from break Austin's disappeared but the cops are still standing there. These cops aren't very bright are they? Back in the ring the Patriots suffering big time. Owen's got a chin lock applied. Owen goes for a pile driver and even though Patriot counters, the King of Hearts manages the floor's opponent with a wheel kick. Patriot comes back with a crossbody and Owen takes the sternum first turnbuckle bump before also taking a back suplex. Patriot eventually hits the Patriot missile and Owen takes a few punches in the corner. Patriot is slowed down considerably here. Just as Owen was about to make a comeback, Steve Austin shows up. He climbs the guardrail. Austin stands on the apron. He rips up the restraining order. Owen backs off and the Patriot's able to pin the king of hearts for the win. This one got better as it went on but it still wasn't great. It seemed like Dale Wilkes wasn't very motivated tonight and I'm not just saying that because I wasn't a big fan, something was off here. This is also the Patriots last match on Raw, his next matches take place on Shotgun Saturday night and of course he has a match on the Bad Blood pay per view. He still makes appearances on Raw by the way but he doesn't get any more matches on Monday nights. 
Eric Bischoff comes to the ring and he says it's an honour to be Eric Bischoff. He says it feels good to be king before inviting the whole NWO to come join him. The boys make their way down to the ring and then Bischoff wants to bring out the guest of honour. Nature Boy Ric Flair's music plays in the arena and out walks Kurt Hennig wearing one of Flair's signature robes. Kurt and the NWO mock Ric Flair in the ring before Hennig says a few words and Kurt ends up taking a can of beer straight to the dome. I mean, it sucks wrestlers had to watch out for this kind of thing, but by god, what a shot. Hennig ignores it and carries on. He calls Ric Flair a jerk while saying he knew he made the right choice when he heard Flair's bones crack during the War Games match. He tells the NWO that this means a lot to him, he's now part of the greatest organization in wrestling, and he takes the robe off to show his NWO vest. Out of respect for Hollywood Hogan, Kurt gets on one knee and he presents the world champion with Flair's robe. The crowd boos and Hogan says this day has been absolutely perfect. Before Hulk continues on, Bischoff asks Macho Man if he accepts DDP's challenge at Halloween Havoc and Macho says it would be an honour. In regards to Roddy Piper, Hogan says he was around when Piper was in charge of the WWF and not once did Roddy tell Hulk or anyone else what to do. I think Hogan's getting a bit confused here, but anyway. Hogan says the last time we saw Piper, Scott Hall dropped him with an outsider's edge. Again, Hogan's getting confused. Hogan says the NWO's gonna do a public service. Their job is to put old fossils like Piper to rest. Uh huh. Scott Hall tries to salvage this by saying there's a place down there where Piper can eat. Down where? Down here. Hogan blabbers on before confirming he'll wrestle Piper at Halloween Havoc. Hogan hopes that Sting watches the match so the Stinger can see what he's in for very soon. And that's it. It was a bit of a train wreck this one. I liked Hennig presenting Ric Flair's robe but that's all I really got out of this whole promo. I also think that putting on another Hogan vs Piper main event match on pay per view was a pretty bad decision. HBK cuts a promo next on Raw while Ultimo Dragon takes on Eddie Guerrero on Nitro. Alright, so this is the episode of Raw where Sean puts a bandage roll down his underwear to make it look like he's got an Alex Wright broadverse and Jim Ross was fucking raging backstage. Now, this episode of Raw was taped, so parts were cut out, but on HBK's DVD documentary we get to see this. <laughs> There's other parts included on the DVD that didn't make it to TV as you can see right here. Sean got fined for this. According to HBK, the fine was then dropped when he talked to Vince McMahon about the direction of the company changing, believe that if you want. But I do believe that Ross was pissed off just by his reactions and how he talks. Why did Sean do this? To pop the boys backstage. Everyone had a good laugh at this, except JR. Anyway, in regards to attacking the bulldog last week, Sean says he's done everything there is to do in the WWF except one thing, and that's to win the European Championship. In regards to the Hell in a Cell match, Sean says this all started when the WWF asked him to be the special referee at SummerSlam. HBK says he'd done a great job, but his reward for doing a great job was getting stuck in a match with The Undertaker. HBK says he gave the fans the best match on the Ground Zero pay per view, and his reward for that was getting stuck in Hell in a Cell with death itself. Sean says he's doing this first ever match type because he's the man and he can. Everyone thinks that Sean has once again signed his own death warrant, but if Sean said it once, he said it a thousand times. If HBK goes down, he's taking everyone with him and he's going down in a blaze of glory. Undertaker then appears on the Titan Tron. He says he can still taste the blood, there's no place to run and there's no place to hide in Hell in a Cell. Taker says the end is at hand and Sean will pay dearly at Bad Blood. Hell in a Cell will be Sean's final resting place. HBK grabs a mic and he says he hopes Taker liked the taste of his own blood because in the Hell in a Cell match, Taker's gonna taste it again. It's great seeing Ultimo Dragon and Eddie Guerrero in the semi main spot on Nitro. The cruiserweight title is on the line in this matchup, and it starts with the champ bringing the challenger down with an armbar. Eddie then performs a drop toe hold followed by a drop kick and Eddie performs a hammerlock slam. Eddie's punishing Dragon in the opening moments of the match. A European uppercut puts Dragon down. Eddie does it twice because the first one was so nice, but Dragon finally replies with a tilt award backbreaker. After taking a few kicks, Eddie sends his opponent to the corner, but Dragon counters. He then pulls off the headstand, and Eddie tries to use Mark Curtis for a little help. When that doesn't work, it looks like Mark takes great delight in seeing Ultimo Dragon's kick combo. Dragon then pulls off a lagger bomb, but Eddie kicks out. 
Dragon then tries a giant swing but his shoulder gives out. He then tries to pull off a Hurricane Rana and it doesn't look good at all. The first thing I thought here was that he was possibly legit injured but he wasn't. He was working again in a few days. Dragon transitions from a sleeper into the Dragon Sleeper but Eddie knees him in the head. Eddie then performs a shoulder breaker and that's all she wrote. We see the frog splash and Eddie Guerrero retains the cruiserweight title. A rare off night for Ultimo Dragon. We have reached the end of our shows, it's main event time. On Nitro, Steve McMichael tries to get some revenge when he battles Kurt Hennig while also defending the US title. On Raw, Brett and Davey take on the Headbangers for the tag belts. A big night for the Headbangers and a tough match for their first Raw's War main event. Bulldog overpowers Thrasher to begin with and he flexes because he's Davey Boy Smith and that's reason enough. Thrasher fires back with a hip toss, a drop toe hold and a nice high angle arm drag afterwards. Mosh comes in and Davey's on the end of some double teamwork and Bulldog tags in Brett immediately after Mosh misses an elbow drop. This motherfucker Mosh shows his excellency how to pull off consecutive arm drags before bringing it down to the mat. Brett then gets his wrist all tied up and Brett makes it to the ropes to force a break. Mosh runs into Brett with a hip attack, Thrasher comes in and Brett gets dropped with a flapjack. Thrasher applies a chin lock that hurts Davey more than it hurts Brett. The headbangers then begin the quick tags and the hitman hasn't got in a single piece of offense since getting tagged in. Good guy Brett letting the boys shine a bit before fucking them up for good. And there it is, Brett tags in Davey while Mosh is still stunned and Mosh with an arm drag and arm bar. This episode should have been called the arm drag special, it's all we have seen tonight and I didn't mention the others I sat through during the max mini match. Both headbangers hammer on Davey, Davey gets a chance to deliver his vertical suplex but Thrasher counters it and yep, you know what. Oof, uh, headbanger arm drag. You deserve that. Marsh comes back in but he gets taken out with a spine buster followed by the vertical suplex. The hitman gets tagged in and the match starts playing out the way you'd expect it to. Hard punishes Marsh in the corner, we see the side rushing leg sweep followed by a few elbow drops. Marsh gets hung up in the tree of woe and Brett lays in the boots. We come back from commercial break and Davey's fighting his way out of a sunset flip attempt. He goes down but he still kicks out. Hard and Bulldog then focus on keeping Marsh away from Thrasher. Brett delivers a backbreaker, his diving elbow uh, misses badly and then Mosh makes the tag. Thrasher punches Davey so hard it knocks him into last week. We then see some messy work when two guys were supposed to bump into each other, even the referee falls over. Davey hits the running power slam on Mosh. One, two, three. We have new tag team champions. Only we don't. Mosh wasn't the legal man. Once Earl realizes he fucked up, he tells the ring announcer that the match is gonna continue and of course, Brett thinks this is a huge injustice to himself, Canada and the whole United Kingdom. Davey, on the other hand, he's too busy fighting with fans at ringside, trying to grab an American flag and it looks pretty tense. But Davey grabs it, he then smacks Thrasher with it and the referee calls for the bell. What an odd finish. Vader and the Patriot then attack the Heart Foundation while Brett was choking out Mosh. Raw fades to black just as the hitman escapes a Vader bomb attempt. Big Mongo runs to the ring to get a Kurt Hennig but it's Kurt who does all the damage. McMichael snaps after taking a few punches to the face and Hennig gets tossed to the other side of the ring. Kurt brings Mongo down with a single leg takedown before slamming his leg into the ring post and Kurt then lets his game plan play out, focus on the leg and focus on the knee. The crowd started off really hot but as Kurt slows it down the crowd gets more and more quiet. Mongo pokes Hennig in the eye and he tries to scoop him up for a power slam but his leg gives out. Once again Kurt slows it down, Mongo fights back with a few punches and once again the injured wheel gives out. Straight back to the mat with another knee twist, Steve's not having a good time here. He once again stands up and he fights back but his big boot slows him down. Larry Sabisco wonders why the fuck Steve keeps trying to kick Hennig. The crowd's attention gets diverted to something else happening in the arena as Mongo gets slammed at the mat. Mongo pokes Kurt in the eye, again, and he tosses him into the corner. The crowd are still distracted and they aren't reacting to the match. Perfect gets thrown to the other side of the ring and he pulls off his signature ring post crotch bump. Mongo makes sure the damage is definitely being done and back in the ring Kurt takes an inverted atomic drop followed by a big punch. We see another inverted atomic drop and another punch and Mongo 
then lines up the three-point stance tackle, but Perfect dodges it. The moment of the match was the Perfect Plex right here. It was almost worth sitting through just for that move. Kurt beats Mongo clean in the ring, and Kurt Hennig wins the United States Championship. Nitro goes off the air as Kurt holds up the belt. We shouldn't expect miracles from main event Mongo, but that's two weeks in a row where the main events have been a little disappointing. Raw had better promos this week, whereas Nitro had better matches. If I compare the two, I'd say I had a better time watching Nitro this week. The Steve Austin stuff was good, and Shawn Michaels acting the bastard was also good, but I enjoyed Nitro more because of the matches that took place. Matches aren't everything, of course, but Nitro made up for the rough NWO promo by putting on good, action packed bouts, except that last one. Nitro's got 44 points, Raw's got 42 points, and we've got 13 ties on the scoreboard. Nitro slips this week in the TV ratings to a 3.9, while Raw jumps up to a 2.6. WWF One Night Only gets covered on the channel next. I talked about the main event before in another video, but I'll do this one again so I can talk about the whole show. It isn't a bad event at all, and it's got an interesting ending. On Nitro, Roddy Piper has a few Halloween Havoc announcements. This guy right here makes his debut, and guys, oh shit. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.